Yes, yeah, so do or die for West Indies. You know that there is forecast for rain, right? So West Indies need to beat Zimbabwe and beat them big. Beating Zimbabwe by a big margin might be an upset. Welcome, Sports Nation, to Sports DTM, the sports channel where we call sports down the middle. You can expect the latest in sports news, views, and reviews from our resident analysts. No sports topic is too controversial, and no team or player is above criticism. So just smash that subscribe button and ring that notification bell to make sure you don't miss out on our balanced offering of riveting sports content. And don't forget to like, share, and leave a comment below. Welcome to Sports DTM. Greetings Sports DTM fans and welcome to another episode of Sports Down the Middle, your channel of undiluted sports content. Raymond and I are here to talk about the upcoming World Cup match between West Indies and Zimbabwe. Raymond, how you feel before we get into it? Oh, go on. How you feel about this, this match? Kurt, I, I can only be optimistic. Have to be, because this is a do or die match. So I have to stay positive and be optimistic. So West Indies and Zimbabwe both have played one matches each. Zimbabwe is coming into this match with some amount of confidence after beating Ireland badly in their first match. They scored 174 for seven of their 20 overs and defended that, holding out, well, but Ireland making 143 for nine of their 20 overs. Zimbabwe winning by 31 runs. West Indies, on the other hand, <laughs> playing against Scotland. And the oh whole boy, they were badly beaten by Scotland after winning the toss and decided to bat to bold first. Scotland made 160. And we thought this was a, this will be an easy chase for the West Indies. But boy, they made a mess of it. They were bowled out for 118 and um, losing by 42 runs, Raymond. Going into this game, these two teams have played each other um, three times in T20. West Indies winning two, Zimbabwe winning one. I'm not sure if these numbers matter at this point. West Indies rank seventh, Zimbabwe 11th in T20 International. This matchup, I mean, West Indies beating Zimbabwe is ups it will be an upset. <laughs> Kurt, um, beating Zimbabwe is really possible, but the margin of victory is what I'm calling an upset. Given what is at stake and the pressure West Indies will be coming under, um, it, it will be an upset to, to beat them by some ridiculous margin and improving um, their, their standing. So that, that is where the upset lies for me, the, the margin of victory. I mean, if we were to look at the way the West Indies performed against Scotland, Raymond. Um, bowling first, Scotland started off well, 50 odd in the first five overs, 10 runs per over. Um, Myers and Usain opened the bowling and they didn't, they didn't get any wicket. They were pretty expensive. 160 for five of their 20 overs. Monsi, 66 or 53, and he was disappointed with that score. He, he's saying that he should have scored more. I guess he must say West Indies are soft side, but older two for 14, Joseph two for 28. When they bat, trying to chase down this 160 that we thought would have been an easy chase because they're playing Scotland, 118 all out. Older again, try his best, 38 of 33. Importantly, we never bat out our 20 overs. And in this chase, we had 52 dot balls. Like half of the overs were dot balls. Yeah, Kurt, that's, that's, that's disappointing. Um, we all know when we put together the team, we were saying that you had a lot of openers. And having a lot of openers meant that you had a, a, form, a formidable um, batting lineup, um, of which anybody could be placed in the order and expect it to be explosive, but that wasn't the case. When you have 52 dot bars, that kind of show you to the extent. I mean, when some persons even say, uh, somebody like a Connor will slow down a team, 52 dot bars, not even a single. I mean, come on, guys. That's, that's real disappointing. 
and 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 especially you know the, the blame can be laid at many persons feet um some might say even poran should shoulder some of the blame because he himself did not perform at all with but knowing what's needed to get them through into the super 12. and as you mentioned talking about laying the blame at somebody's feet the coach in a post match press conference said that the players were unprofessional and i mean when a coach can come out and say they're unprofessional in their approach it, it's telling but and and do we expect the coach to point out those unprofessional players and maybe replace them but then again who is there to replace them with yeah, so uh, after speaking like that, I'm, I'm sure the coach would make a, a professional decision and actually do some tweaking, whether, you know, whether the lineup change or something of the sort, and, and actually look at players who are not, you know, pulling their weight and make that necessary adjustment. You know, we're expecting that. Given that he's labeled the team as being unprofessional, he would be able to now make a professional decision, a proper coaching decision, and, and make some adjustment to the team, if not a stern talking for sure, because they can't go into this game with the same attitude. I mean, uh, whilst he, he mentioned that the players were unprofessional in the way they bat, the same players, he, he described them as professional when they bowled. But in, in watching how they played against Scotland, especially when we were bowling, the, the energy was extremely low. There is little talking, there is little running around. And when you see the expression on the player's face, it, you could tell that something was off. I'm not sure what is off, but uh, do you have any additional information that can, that can let the fans know what, what, what is off? Something is really no, off, no, though. Nothing, maybe fatigue, but for, for, the, for the most part, I almost think is underestimating your opponent. You are playing and you figure that this should be a walk in the park, given the firepower you think you have um, and, and the lack thereof in terms of firepower for Scotland. And boy, were you wrong. I mean, when you saw Munzi exploded to that 66, you probably start looking around and wonder, OK, um, we're under a little pressure. But, you know, if we skip them out, you know, for less than 170, we're, we have enough firepower to do that, to, to chase that runs and eclipse it. But that wasn't the case. So I think he's really underestimating your opponent big time. And as such, you got a heavy defeat and lie at the bottom of the table because of that. It's, it's really unfortunate. And, and this opponent, now the new opponent is Zimbabwe, who we mentioned earlier, beat Ireland by 31 runs, batting first, scoring 174 for seven of their 20 overs and then defended that Ireland 143 for nine of their 20 overs. Zimbabwe, of course, is going into this match against the West Indies with some amount of confidence and possibly thinking that after watching how they played against Scotland, that hey, this, is, this is our opportunity to take, to take this match, win it against the West Indies and advance to the Super 12 or make the chances of the West Indies much, much slimmer with only one match to play after this. Yeah, naturally, Kurt, um, there's blood in the water. A lot of teams right now is would be looking forward to playing the West Indies given their form. And as such, I'm seeing Zimbabwe, you know, looking to take advantage after, you know, that confidence build against Ireland, who, you know, gave West Indies some challenge. Uh, they're figuring that if they're able to play as good as Scotland and even better, they should put, you know, put West Indies to the knife or the sword, so to speak. I mean, going up, going up against Zimbabwe in this match, there are some concerns with the team. For me, the batting of the captain still scoring double single digit and the way he got out against Scotland, he was playing long before the ball even reached him. Right, he was his face was turned to square leg when the ball hit in his thumb. I mean, that's how far out of sync he was. There's Brooks who came in for Etmeyer, and Brooks has been struggling on this tour. There's Lewis at the top of the order, his first double figure score in a while. Um, 14 off 
13 balls. Those are the concerns for me in terms of the batting. And I saw Odin Smith batting at number 10. I'm not sure what's up with that. Um, and then for bowlers, McCoy came in none for 25 off his three overs. And I'm saying none for 31 off his four overs as well. Do we see the possibility of replacing any of these players with the reserves? Um, so the thing is, I'm, I'm, I would love to see Raymond Rifa comes in. He's very consistent in terms of uh, hitting 20s. You know, so you almost can expect Raymond Rifa to put up at least 23, 25 um, in any given and match. He had a good, he had a good um, bowling figures in the warm up. Yeah, for so 17, he, I think. So he's not so bad. But the problem I'm having now is who to replace him with. You know, because who, who are going to change out to have Ray Marifa comes in? I, I want him to be there, but I'm, I'm struggling to see who to come out for him. Some names come to mind, but I'm really not so sure. <laughs> well, Lewis is always. So I would, I'm thinking maybe we should push um, King to open with Myers and bring in Rifa in the middle. So for uh, Brooks batter three. Although Brooks is struggling, but there's not much of an option in terms of replacement. There's Jansa Charles, unless Jansa Charles is going to come in as a keeper and let Puran focus on his batting. Then and that, uh, Puran at three, and that clearly that not going to no. happen. So, so the toss up right now for me is replacing Lewis with Rifa and push King up the order and bat Brooks at three. Brooks has been batting at three. For mm -hmm. ODI and T20, um, for all of the West Indies matches up to when he was replaced in the squad. Um, so I would probably put him back there and see how he goes. He had a good tournament in the CPL, so you just need to get his his act together. Um, so Puran would bat at four and Powell and so on, the other players, and Smith and Older further down the order for me. Again, I can see that. I definitely can see that. Um, for, for the case of Charles, though, I, I'm not so certain. Um, I, I wish there was like a, a hope, you know, a strong hope, you know, in, in the, for, to replace Charles. But let's see, because they, 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 they've got not stern talking to, and ho hopefully are expecting, you know, some level of response, because they can't take this opponent lightly. One more match, you know, losing this match, or even not winning it commandingly. Can actually, you know, put West Indies in a, in a spot of bother, big time. Well, West Indies is already already in a spot of bother. But what do you think about the bowlers? Would you bring in a Cottrell to replace a McCoy, for instance, or the? I don't even want to say this, but replace it the spinner. Were you going to say carrier? <laughs> no. Okay. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Um, not not necessarily, uh, not necessarily, Kurt. Um, I'm seeing the the talent of the bowlers is enough, is is enough to actually get them over the line. It's just the batting, as usual, is some of the things the question. And as I said, you brought in all these openers, so you're figuring that you're bringing a strong batting lineup with enough play to switch up and and you know move up and down the orders of different players to create you know, confusion to the to the bowling attack of any team. But that's not what we're seeing at all as a coach label it unprofessional. Going into this match against Zimbabwe, in, in the previous match, we asked or we, we, we said that West Indies' best option is to bowl first, they did, and they last. So going on against Zimbabwe and seeing how Zimbabwe batted well against Ireland, do we bowl first or Bat first. Oh boy, um, Kirk. So you know, it, it doesn't matter at this point. <laughs> you know, we don't have to come from. Um, but my preference would actually be in a case where you know chasing is always my preference. So they should bowl first. That's that's just my preference. But it really doesn't matter if they play like like how they play against Scotland. What whether bowl first or bat first, it it won't look good. So fans out there, 
we would love to hear from you. What's your thoughts on the West Indies performance against Scotland? I mean, you've expressed that, but what do you think should happen when they face Zimbabwe? Do you think they should bat first or bowl first? Or do you agree with Raymond that whatever option they take, they should ensure that they come out and deliver and perform give a dominant performance over this team to ensure that they're in a good position going into the Super 12 because we can't end this tournament in in, the, in round one. This is just, this is criminal if this is, if this is to happen. So we would love to hear from you by you leaving your comments in the comment section below. And always remember to like, to share, and to subscribe, and to tell a friend, to tell a friend, to tell a friend, to tell a friend, to tell all of them friends the commander and the sports DTM family. Raymond and I signing out, saying, be blessed.